Okay, all right. Uh, before we go on that break, we have Professor of Managerial Economics, uh, Professor Emmanuel Abolo, to help us dissect these numbers and tell us some of the implications. Professor Abolo, good morning, and uh, thank you for your time this morning. Good morning. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here this morning. Great. Uh, to dissect this. Yeah, so we, so we see the numbers and we know the worry. The worry is that um, from December to now, uh, Nigeria's uh, public debt has gone from 97.3 to 121.6. Uh, and uh, the DMO has come to explain that, uh, of course, there are new borrowings. And then we know there was the securitization of the ways and means. And then we also had the minister uh, also telling us that, well, we should look at the glass as half full, not half empty. What do you see? Half empty, half full. Uh, thank you very much for that uh, brilliant uh, you know, question. Um, yeah, the minister, the coordinating minister, has provided some clarity to say that uh, Nigeria's public debt you know, fell from uh, $108 billion as of December 2023 to uh, $91 uh, billion uh, as of uh, March. Uh, let me be very clear. Uh, I think the uh, you know the, the minister ought to explain that very clearly to say that this is due to uh, you know, exchange rate, uh, you know, fundamentals. Uh, the value of the Naira had depreciated so massively, and therefore the fall, the so-called fall in uh, external, in, in debt, in terms of, in dollar terms, is it, not, is neither here nor there. You need to account for the exchange rate fundamentals. Currently, the exchange rate is at about 1,400, 500, you know, Naira to a dollar. Compare that to December. So it's very clear. Let's not... Uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, play with figures. Uh, there is no, uh, you know, significant, uh, you know, decline in terms of uh, external debt, but, you know, public uh, in terms of public debt in, in dollar terms. Now, uh, explanations can be provided by the uh, the DMO. Uh, the coordinating minister can provide explanation. Uh, even the central bank itself can provide explanation. But looking at these figures, you will see clearly that you know the burden. I mean, the, 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 the value, the, am the amount of public of debt generally, I mean, it, it's, it, it, it's very, very significant. It's very, very worrisome. It's very, very worrisome. And I think it is time to begin to inter interrogate, you know, the implications of this uh, huge debt. That's, I think that should be the focus here. So any explanation can be provided. The point is, these debts are just too high for this economy. That's, that's, that's the truth, period. Uh, now, um, what are the implications? Maybe I should uh, leave that to you to begin to ask the question, but I've interrogated the, the numbers to say that these are huge. And of course, the DMO has Maybe you should give us the implications, Prof. Maybe we should just go okay. ahead and say the implications. Okay. Uh, before the implication, let me be very clear. You know, uh, DMO... Uh, the central bank governor, they will explain that we are still within normal limits, whatever that means. That, yes, the figures are 108 billion, that we are still within uh, limits in terms of uh, the debt GDP ratio. But, you see, when you run a country, you are not looking at the, at the upper, upper threshold, the upper threshold. So if, if the international uh, you know, uh, institutions, international community says that the debt GDP ratio it uh, should be, uh, you know, 200 billion. And now you're at 108 billion. So you, you beat your chest that you're still within normal limits. And I think that is a, a very, very weak argument. Very, very weak argument. So let's try to interrogate some of the implications of what we are putting ourselves in this country. We are in, a, we're in an abyss when it comes to, you know, this, uh, this issue of public debt. We're in an abyss. One of the implications is... Uh, is the fiscal strain this excessive debt is going to put Nigeria, put Nigeria into. We look at the servicing cost. It's been reported and is the figures are there. You will, you will find that the servicing cost of these debts is even outpacing the total revenue of government. So you have a huge budget and fiscal deficits. So that is going to put fiscal strain on government fiscal strain on Nigeria. Then, of, of course, the huge debt is also going to crowd out. It's going to crowd out public investment in critical areas of the economy. And that is going to slow down economic uh, growth 
and development. In terms of currency and inflation, we can also mention that the high debt can lead to serious uh, you know, currency depreciation. That, that's what we witness. Uh, but of course, we, we, do we say we should thank the central bank that there has been some stability? But that exchange rate, 150, 1,500 naira to a dollar, that is extremely very high for this, for this country. So there are going to be currency risk because part of the, the component, a major co part of the component of the, of, the, of the debt is the external debt. Let's look at that. You see, when there is exchange rate volatility, you are going to, uh, uh, you know, going to be facing currency uh, risk. So uh, uh, they need to explain to us how they are going to mitigate that currency risk. So when you begin to have excessive external borrowing, of course, someone has argued that in terms of moratorium, in terms of uh, you know, uh, the cost of borrowing and all of that, and the uh, uh, issues of tenor of uh, external uh, borrowing, that that has seemed to be, to be good. But I think that is a very weak argument. There are serious currency risk issues, and um, you know, government needs to explain how that is going to be handled. What about uh, you know, vulnerability to the external sector? When you borrow externally, you are subject to external sector vulnerabilities. And we need to have the right, you know, uh, you know, the right framework to be able to handle you know, issues of uh, external debt vulnerability. Yeah, so, Prof, so, let, let me just come in there, Prof, and, and look at the domestic. We've seen the government, I believe, is intentionally looking inwards. You know, so it's more of domestic debt. At least for the first six months of the year, we've seen the fixed income market really busy. Doesn't that give us a little bit of relief, seeing that debt servicing, instead of you know going with the dollar, uh, which we see as, at some point really strengthened, doesn't that reduce our debt servicing and also give us a little bit of reprieve as as Nigeria? Are we looking at uh, the unintended consequences? So even when you are borrowing domestically, you are saying you are borrowing in Naira. You are going to use this money to fund, according to you, to fund infrastructure. Now, what are the components? What are the elements? Those infrastructure, you are going to import them. You are going to import the materials. You are going to import the iron, import so many things. So even when it is a... Wow, I think uh, we do have a network fluctuation right there with Professor Emmanuel Aboli was going to tell us that even though we can, uh, you know, maybe it's a bit of relief to say it's domestic borrowing, so it doesn't, uh, the servicing of that debt does not increase as the value of the dollar strengthens, uh, but we still do have some you know, prizes or disadvantages also borrowing at all. But I mean, a lot of economists would actually say that uh, borrowing isn't bad in and of itself. But what are you using the borrowing or the loan for? If it's being used to boost economic activities, then, you know, it might as well be a positive thing. I don't know if we have the prof back now. Professor Abelo. Oh, okay. Well, unfortunately, uh, I wonder if we'll be able to conclude that conversation. But this is obviously an ongoing conversation in Nigeria, the issue of debt and the movement between the, third, the fourth quarter of 2023, that's at December, where we had it at 97.34 to more than 121 uh, trillion naira in January, uh, a source of worry. Prof, are, are you back? Can you hear me? Yes, I'm back. I apologize okay. for that. Very yeah. Probably, uh, yeah. So you were going to explain some of the implications of even the domestic debt, which we think will cost the government less. But well, you say it has other consequences. Yes. You know, uh, in macroeconomic fundamentals, they interact. You know, they interact. You, there's no way you're going to isolate them. Everything is connected. Everything is. So you are discussing this within a systemic framework. Everything is connected. So let's not deceive ourselves by saying, yes, we are focusing more on domestic debt. But the question is, how are you, the, the, the domestic debt, which is in Naira, you are going to also import items in order to, for, to, for this uh, infrastructure development and so on. So there's no way you are going to escape from the you know, exchange rate you know, implications and the exchange rate impact on domestic debt. But I think it's very important to just stress, we should stop borrowing. 
we should stop borrowing. Let's not try to be explaining and putting things here and there to explain. Let's stop borrowing for now. At least for six months, the country will not collapse. Excessive borrowing since uh, 2017 or so, if you look at the figures, the trajectory and the trend is worrisome. Can we just stop? Now, other implications of these uh, you know, huge you know, debts, whether domestic or whether external, you put all of them together, they're into one bucket. You're going to constrain, the government is going to constrain its, itself in terms of policy articulation and policy management. What do we mean here? When you have very high you know, public debt, you are going to limit your ability to use fiscal policy to stimulate the economy. Because there are two main types of policy. You have the, uh, the monetary policy and then the fiscal policy. You know, studies have shown that when you have huge external debt, you are going to constrain yourself, you know, when it comes to the fiscal space. But and Prof, sure the, it, Prof yes. let, let me ask, when you say the government should stop borrowing, but the government does need funds to run the country, pay salaries and, you know, take up projects, where should the funding come from? Except you're asking taxes, obviously, which is the next source of, of uh, revenue, should be increased. I hear you. You're talking about borrowing to pay salaries. That is the worrisome aspect. So people but, are but it's our reality for now. It is our reality for now. Yes, it is a reality. When you have an emergency situation, you take emergency actions. Now, let me, let me also mention very clearly, we have always argued very forcefully that we should reduce the cost of governance. We should reduce the cost of governance. So if you look at what is happening recently, people have alluded to that. If you look at the actions, I would say the actions of government in terms of the types of uh, funding, expedition on certain items, and uh, you, know, you now match that against what is happening to the people of this country, people are beginning to ask, must you borrow money to do all of these things? And there is their transparency, issue of transparency in governance. It's very important. If you say you borrowed 100 billion, can you show us the benefits of this uh, amount that you have? Can, can we be transparent? Tell us, let us see the benefits in concrete terms that is verifiable. That is the issue. But I was just mentioning the issue of uh, cost of governance. Let us reduce the cost of governance. Or also your report, you know, it's nowhere to be found after several decades. Can we reduce the cost of governance? Must we really borrow? If we don't borrow in six months' time, are we going to really die? And the answer is no. So All right, let Charles. us rethink. Let us step back and rethink the model and say, yes, how do we better approach this issue. All right, we talked about uh, you, know, uh, you know revenue diversification. We've talked about uh, you know diversifying the, the the productive base of this country since 1986 during the uh, Babangida era. We talked about diversification of revenue. What are we doing here? We're just focusing just on uh, on oil and gas and all of that, and then borrowing. So for well, how long are we going to be borrowing? We are going to. Uh, in the ultimately compromise our sovereignty when we expose ourselves to you know to uh, excessive uh, borrowing investor confidence is going to be affected all right These are realities. all right yes. prof. we really have to stop it there thank you so much nigeria should stop borrowing at least for six months i think that's one clear message you're sending this morning professor emmanuel abolo yes, yes, yes. professor of managerial yes. economics yeah enjoy thank the rest you. of your day thank you Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll head to the market just before we head back to the Sunrise Daily Studios.